I play a lot of games. Some good, some ironically. I, to I be honest. I... And one's where I want to jump off Swagger a very large building. In, in Minecraft, of course. Valorant is a game that falls into the latter category. And although I could sit here analysing every ass crack of each of the character and talk in depth about spray Holy patterns fuck. and other useless garbage, in today's episode of Washed Up and Fallen Off YouTuber, I'm going to be talking about why game bad, but more specifically, how detrimental a community can be to the reputation of a game. To scream, I want to be monkey again! I love how his mom's just built like a fucking forklift. Y you can see where this is going. Are you a gamer girl? Yeah. <laughs> Women are cringe, I'm sorry. What was the plan then, genius? For those who are unaware, Valorant is a first-person shooter where one team has to plant a bomb and the other team has to defuse it. Okay, never mind. It's called a spike in this game. I guess it was to avoid getting lawyers involved. Oh, I, I did a reference. I guess the only difference to Counter-Strike is that there are these special characters with different abilities, which I despise heavily. I don't know what it is with video game publishers nowadays with their obsessions to just ruin the game by having these stupid pay-to-win specialists, but it's honestly awful. I just fucking hate Along with my personal issues with the game, there are some objective problems with Valorant. By now, I think everyone is familiar with the streaming service Twitch. Known for being a very nice, wholesome place for people to stream their favourite games. Oh, and also stealing other people's content. Or shaking their ass and tits in a hot tub for money. My son wasn't dirty! Now, Twitch actually has a system in place called Twitch Drops, a feature which allows viewers to earn rewards by simply just watching the streamer, because apparently the content creators over on Twitch are so boring that you need an ulterior motive to watch XQC bounce up and down on his gaming chair all day. <laughs> To be anyway, Valorant seized this opportunity by launching a closed beta on April the 7th, 2020, where in order to actually play the game, you had to watch an ungodly amount of hours of Pokemane to earn it. So I guess it wasn't really a closed beta, more of just a way for Twitch and Valorant to work together and make lots of money during the pandemic. Yeah, don't, don't you think that's convenient that a game that was apparently in development since 2014, according to Wikipedia, but just so happened to release their beta during the time where everyone was forced to sit inside all day due to government restrictions. Please be a pyro main. Please. Shut up! I do think it's quite funny that the publisher of Valorant, Riot Games, is owned by Tencent, a Chinese conglomerate. Let's play League of Legends. I'm just saying, no conspiracies, but it's kind of weird. Regardless, Bye. this was the perfect time to strike for Valorant. Which had doubled in the hours of content watched from the previous year, and Valorant Gaming was going to help bolster that. My fucking taquitos! <laughs> Women. <laughs> One of the biggest exploits of this whole Valorant Twitch drop scheme was the fact that many Twitch streamers were now just doing 24 hour streams where they were replaying old content, knowing that people would just leave Twitch on in hope of getting a Valorant beta code, which kind of illegitimizes the aspect that this method was good all round because people actually didn't give a shit about the viewer involved or their content, just the beta access. Stealing them blind! The beta then ended almost two months after on May the 28th, with the official game releasing on the 2nd of June, which is a ridiculously long beta. So again, this just proves the point that this was some top tier business strategy. First times. Well, it's never easy, there won't exactly be a no. As we've seen time and time again with these video game companies, and especially big fat inflated honest, business, I they always want more from the consumer. I'd love to teach you how to swim underwater, but not as much as I'd love to take your treasure. <laughs> companies involved in this online space have never had a good reputation with the general public. You dork. Go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? Shut up, dude. Oh, you're really surprised this guy is stealing all of your data and jerking off to it, really? <sighs> Jarvis, your Mandarin is so soothing. Come on. A large stereotype is directed towards China, which is based on the assumption that China likes to collect data from users outside of China. This is why things became very skeptical for Valorant fans when Riot Games demanded kernel level access just for you to play the game. The anti-cheat is called Riot Vanguard. It sounds very safe, and I'm going to download it. You know it's a big problem when even an Indian tech scammer refused to install the game without him doing this on his virtual machine? Let's fire up a Windows 10 virtual machine and get things started. Whoa, look at that camera. The funniest thing about this whole thing is that statistically, this anti-cheat is no more successful than Valve's when compared between the percentage of users banned between CSGO and Valorant. And, and we all know how terrible Counter-Strike is for banning cheaters. That being said, I did play the game. I did not have a nice time. 
Now, I'm getting quite old. I've been playing games since I crawled out of my mother's womb. I remember playing some of my first ever games on the PlayStation 2, and that enjoyment from gaming has always continued. But when you've been interested in something for so long, it starts to get stale and boring. Ubisoft is one of the worst game companies when it comes to this. Far Cry 3 is honestly one of my favorite games. It's got Nacho from Better Call Saul, cool environment, funny moments, and it's honestly a very well-made game. And although I'm aware Far Cry 2 was similar in aspects, Far Cry 3 felt amazing for my entry into the Far Cry franchise. That being said, that formula has been milked dry from start to finish. If you try to interfere, This becomes a much simpler matter. Every next game has had the same concept of having a story mode and then collectible things with the only difference being the environment. Now, I really do like Far Cry, so I can look past this at times, apart from these two games. But this method of making games is what Ubisoft always do. Assassin's Creed is exactly the same and Valorant suffers from the same problem. That's why games like you Cruelty are Squad are so much more fun and junkie. exciting, as it's a different experience than the monotonous copy and paste AAA games that are released every year. I do believe the main reason I'm able to rack up so many hours in a game comes down to how familiar it is and replayability. I don't have infinite time to learn Valorant and its map like I did with CSGO, when it's literally waiting there to be played. It's also just a game I always go back to anyway because it's somewhat nostalgic for me having played it first back in 2015 you got hey, how's it going, My name is and despite any preconception you may have about the very calm and respectful Eastern European community there is still a lot of fun to be had in the game I also just think CSGO is a better game I have pure hatred for this fucking heroes concept as I think it just gives way for more imbalancing in video games I mean look at Rainbow Six Siege to this day, people are still banning Jackal at the start of every game since he's still very overpowered. And it's the same with this funny little Swedish character in Overwatch. Valorant definitely had this issue almost tenfold. I remember a game where I had a guy literally crying on the microphone because my hard drive was slightly faster, resulting me into getting to play the character he wanted to play. Oh, and most importantly in this comparison, the skins in CSGO are way cooler. Like this copyright artwork worth anywhere between $200 and $2,300. Oh also, might I note that the CSGO market feature is like Chef's Kiss, Biggest whereas Valorant skins bad. Now, although skins don't actually matter to a game, and in some cases they actually ruin it, World War II shooter, by the way. The fact that you can sink so much money into buying cosmetic items and not be able to trade them and sell them is such bullshit. I'd even buy one of your relatives if you're looking to sell. <laughs> I don't know whether this is due to the problems with skin websites like CSGO had, but please, at least give me the ability to gamble all my money away until I violently smash household items. And today's video isn't just me shitting on a video game because I'm really bad at it. Instead, it's time to bully individuals who have never had a father figure. So for the final... Hey, I'll give you an the entertainment sector having a bad and cringy audience is nothing new. I'm the Joker, man. Many games, TV shows, and even influencers have fallen victim to it. I don't know if you ever heard this guy. They just recently added Tyrone. For an adult now, this is a He plays Minecraft and uploads different parts of his body parts so that underage girls scream on Twitter.com. To be fair, I was editing this, he's actually done a face reveal where he just looks to one side the entire time. Unironically, it looks like the troll face. Dream is probably the most recent example of how fandom can completely destroy any enjoyment you can get out of his content. Sure, Minecraft content isn't particularly riveting, Perfect. Perfect. but simply hearing someone's name shouldn't make me want to put a 12 gauge shotgun to my head. And sometimes the content credit doesn't even help to negate falling into this cesspool. Recently, I saw on my favorite app that Dream was unironically selling a wristband with his baby photos uploaded to it on a USB. Next, Dream's gonna start selling CP of themselves to his audience. Uh, CP is in COD points. These terrible communities are able to be formed much easier with content creators rather than with any other form of media due to this online buzzword called parasocial relationships. Now, I'm aware some of these words might be new to you guys, such as the word relationship, but yeah, the Google definition finds that a parasocial relationship consists of interests that are only one-sided, which, yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. <laughs> I'm sure if Dream claimed he was Slenderman, small children would start collecting the funny pages with PewDiePie and start stabbing each other together. However, that's a story for another day. The thing to note here is that reputation matters. If a game has the reputation of being cringe for kids and their player base are viewed as child predators, Hello. then it's going to reduce serotonin levels in our monkey brains. Of course, there are some exceptions. Fortnite managed to crawl itself back into the limelight for nostalgia purposes. Now, another game has had its bad moments. These boys did go hard. But some fans take it a step further and decide to post themselves emoting on the app TikTok. 
The worst offenders of this used to be Rick and Morty fans with the like stinky cosplayers. <coughs> the new catchphrase. Oh yeah? W what's that, Rick? Well, maybe you should just go ahead and die then. And then this other weird game called Cuphead. I've, I've never heard of it before though. Recently, something worse has happened. A community so terrible that even its own actors have seemingly had enough. Chrissy, wake up! Can I just say how weird that is? I swear I've never seen a normal person wear one of these t-shirts outside. I also don't know why anyone would wear something that gives off a visual warning Beautiful. that they are now a threat to national security and have never showered in their life. Take the red pill and please don't buy the £14 t-shirt on Redbubble of your favourite TV <laughs> character. I also love how the most popular character from Stranger Things is a character who acts goofy and different and is bullied for it. <laughs> Just sounds like a massive coat by a bunch of sad losers. It could never be me though. I love sitting in my dark room making fun of other people who look like they are enjoying their life just because they may or may not have underlying mental disabilities. Did I leave Morty on that planet? I I'll get another one. In my defense, this character did spawn one of the worst videos I've ever seen in my TikTok for you page. For me, I really like Eddie. And what do you like about Eddie? It's Eddie! A big goofball! So yeah, fandoms can ruin an entire show for some people. I don't think I'm ever gonna watch Scooby-Doo in real life ever again. It isn't all that bad though. This funny little lawyer show has a really good audience. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 not this big mouth Fun shit show. Yeah. Look on a mask. I don't book. care about it! Maybe then that means the issue is actually with the content itself. Do shows like Stranger Things actually warrant all this praise and people jerking off to underage characters in the show? Because, you know, maybe it just doesn't. But but Lawyer Show is very good. I also think the self-awareness the fans have play a big part. From my perspective, communities formed from Breaking Bad tend to actually post funny uh, things hilarious. and are self-aware of the fact that what they post is just a shit post and nothing more. But on the contrary, when you do see some edits that aren't meant to be funny, it at least seems justified since the show is actually outstanding. As opposed to a group of children with bad voice acting and forcing sexuality upon its characters. So maybe if media good, audience good? Well, whether or not you think Valorant is an actual good game is up to you. Things are subjective and that's fine. I'm not going to cry about it on Reddit, but it's undeniable that the online landscape is shaping for better or for worse. Can you do a uh, arara for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember when I would log on and get screamed at by a bunch of 30 year old men on a game of Call of Duty just because my voice was so high that it would make dogs bark. No one, what is happening? In Shut the fuck up, you cunt! Well, that one time my friend cheated in a 1v1 on Black Ops 2. He killed me with a stun. A stun. He can't use a stun. Yeah, guys, look. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll play the rest. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll play the rest. Yeah, yeah, look guys, look, look. Hey, disconnected. But gaming is changing. Toxicity and being ruthless to each other is becoming a thing of the past. Censorship recently is becoming rampant, with even PlayStation and other companies listening to your private chats in hope that they hear you say any gaming words. Not only this, gaming just isn't what it once was all them years ago in those Modern Warfare 2 lobbies. The world itself has become much more progressive, where hailing slurs at each other and pushing gamers to near suicide should, isn't funny anymore, but for, for some people. I don't know whether this is a bad thing or not. Yeah, I miss the days where you could say anything you wanted to the opposing player and try to upset them, but at the same time, was it right? It's for definite that recently gaming has been way more inclusive than it has been ever before. And I'm not talking about big business pretending to care about minorities by including colorful flags. That's just a scummy marketing moment. But in my opinion, especially for girls, gaming has become a way more inclusive zone. And maybe this does attribute to gaming not being what it once was, with women adding their feminine touch to some of the most manly games ever. But was it ever right for an entire group of people to be disenfranchised because they have boobs? That being said, with a whole new way for losers to communicate with women, this does open up more opportunities for some of the worst interactions ever to take place. Anyways, don't go harass more women because it's funny and it's comfortable. Like this one guy who furry roleplayed about how to overweight honest, his sonar was. You he did the same. If you're familiar with Overwatch, you know the game where men play roleplay. And women play cute little anime character like D.Va. You're completely disgusting! Anyway, there's a custom server called Tinder Watch where players can choose preferences for women in an attempt to make them have e-sex with them on Discord. That this normal upstanding citizen here likes tall and dominant women. The gameplay consists of people doing virtual lap dances whilst their Discord moderator spams voice lines to try and mark their territory. 
Alright, bro, that's your fucking girl, man. This is an actual Discord kitten simulator, I swear. I mean, it gets worse from here. Websites like ePal, where you can literally pay someone to play video games with you. What sort of sad, lonely guy spends actual money just to have an interaction with a girl? It is fucking beyond me. Told you not to go in there! That is my room! That is my stuff! And before you think, oh, this is just a little wholesome app to find and talk to people when you're lonely. That, that's a load of BS. The service literally allows you to listen to the person's voice before you pay them. As if that really mattered when it came to playing an online game. I got hella skins. For the Phantom, for Randall, the Sheriff. So you might be asking then, how does this relate to Valorant? Well, Valorant is probably the worst when it comes to this kind of behavior. Where CSGO continued the act of screaming loud noises down the microphone. <laughs> Valorant players took a different route when it came to communicating with their teammates. Just spam in my ear real quick and then you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> what a fucking loser. As I spoke about previously, video games are getting a lot softer and Valorant is the epitome of that with matching names like this I'm only recording. scratching the Watching surface. What aids a video game is a good stream of content for viewers to watch and find enjoyment out of it. The glory days of this were Le Funny Let's Plays where Swedish man would once again put on a funny voice and feature in episodes of South Park. People are shooting at me, bro! You're watching someone play Call of Duty and talk about it? What a fucking name. Or Vanos Gaming and, and yes, even you Comedy Shorts Gamer. Hey baby, my name's Comedy Shorts Gamer. It doesn't even feel real. Valorant, however, comes from an age where gaming is all about being the best, regardless if that makes you a terminally online YouTuber. How could I be lonely when I'm sitting here talking to a thousand people? Gaming is way more serious now, and in my opinion, it's starting to ruin the fun to be had in it. I mean, come on, look at this. No wonder he's good at the game. He hasn't actually gone outside since launch day. There's no fucking Mars bar down there. What are you looking at? This isn't even the worst of it, however. Best app of all joke. time, TikTok, harbors some of the worst video game content I've ever witnessed. For every kill you get, I'll give you an ooh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bet. I want to stab you to death. In other words, every time man gets a kill, woman proceeds to make sexual noises in a child voice. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my god, it's so adorable. Actual full-grown man jizzing everywhere over a children's voice. What what a weirdo. I think what's worse is like the voice that the bloke will put on, like this mysterious cringe anime voice. Uh, this filter is pretty nice. I like it. There's no fucking Mars bar down there. Whilst probably being 300 pounds and never interacting with a female in real life. I should do it more I'm gonna blow it inside you your think? head all over four county. On the topic of that. You're so pretty. Like, oh my god, you're gorgeous. Oh, you know, yeah. This is what I'm talking about, like, Gee, wow, what is yeah. this? So I'm also not standing for this LARP as well as, uh, it, it was a joke, it was ironic. You can be cringe, even if it's ironically. You really made my pants turn into a moisty mire. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. If I see a guy walk up to a bunch of girls chanting Big Chungus in the name of irony, I'm still gonna wanna put a bullet in my head. And this is what the majority of the Valorant community consists of. People recording really forced and funny moments in their lobbies. <laughs> that poor sage, it's a funny episode, and yet all I feel- SHUT THE FUCK UP! Excited. Or pedophiles interacting with girls that put on a high-pitched voice. Uh -huh. <laughs> you piece of shit! I guess another category is probably those videos that just clip up one of the most uncharismatic streamers sat in their shit-stained chair, hitting some trick shot. Oh my God. And it just really makes me sad for how far we've fallen. I'm upset. And ultimately, the worst thing about Valorant is the uh, amount of fucking yeah. porn there is. <laughs> Porn. Can we just not draw porn of things for, for five, five minutes? minutes? I don't know why communities where the game has a CGI character produces so much degeneracy. Like, I've never had an issue with Counter-Strike where I've ended up seeing a shitty image of James Charles lowering his ass on the end of a sniper rifle. But somehow after a mere five minutes of research into this video, I've already seen Rainer give two blowjobs. It's all good, man. Gaming wasn't always like this, however. I remember growing up with funny trolling videos where fully grown men would push children to have mental breakdowns. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. It was almost like the whole purpose of these videos was to entertain and garner a laugh out of the audience. Whereas now it feels like it's just a guy sat there giving you forced reactions to a really boring game. Or God forbid putting on a deep voice to impress women thousands of miles away. To the press, okay? I don't know how many viewers are In summary, gaming is getting more stale, repetitive and boring. Those good old days will forever be old days. 
And for me, Valorant just sort of sums that up. I'm sure had this game come out in 2014, I would have been all over it. But nowadays, it seems like no games are reinventing the wheel. Like I said at the start of the video, why would I play this game when Counter-Strike exists? Counter-Strike is so synonymous with a simpler time that it makes sense for me to turn back to something way more familiar to me. Nowadays, I feel like gaming really needs to innovate and do something wildly different to catch my attention. My previous video was on a game called Cruelty Squad, which was a perfect example of that. It was so deranged and unique to anything I'd ever experienced before, while still having that charm of it being an FPS shooter. I'm sure you've heard stories from your parents that they liked playing said game back in their day, but now they have a major issue with you playing on the Xbox for more than 10 minutes. Go to the bathroom! You're shitting yourself! Not yet. <laughs> this kind of resonates a lot with me that eventually we may just finally grow up and leave this phase behind us. Anyway, I don't want to nostalgia bait for too long, so I'm gonna let myself let finish. finish. Thank you for making it this far in the video. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I've been trying to work harder on actually making videos rather than spinning around in my gaming chair for hours. So um, yeah, I do appreciate that. But anyway, if you enjoy this, like it, subscribe, and then come back next year when I make my next video, where most of the video is just a shit post, and then I attempt to sound intelligent at the end.